WFC. Well, I'm back this week. I'm back and after last week's no show, but I have a great excuse. We lost to Leicester City and I was at Leicester and the traffic was an absolute nightmare to get back in time for. But welcome back to All for United WFC. It's the Ben and Matt Saturday Night Live. And it's um, one of my favourite fucking times of the year, international breaks. How are we doing, Matt? You good? Yeah, a bit rushed traffic as well for me today. Um, 20 minute journey's taken over an hour, so yeah, uh, Stuart, what are you saying? Hey, hey, hey. On, on that <laughs> note, I actually turn up a little bit late, but I actually turn up. <laughs> hey, mate, by the time I by the time I got back from Leicester last week, mate, um, <laughs> the show's over about two hours. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I don't know. How's everyone doing in the comments? So uh, glad to see you all stuck around, you know, uh for the it's despite the 15 minute delay. Um David Ake as well, he was one of the first to um to sort of comment back when I put out the apology for the 15 minute delay. Uh John Foster always with the Leicester comment there, you know. Wow. Uh, Leicester's not 20 minutes away. Exactly, mate, exactly. Um <laughs> How's everybody doing? Uh, it's not too bad, not too bad. Um, just looking forward to tomorrow. Tomorrow is the, the, the big day, you know. Uh, and Robert, good evening, pal. I hope you're, you're doing well, buddy. And uh, obviously watch us while you're watching the Grand Prix qualify, which I'm pretty sure is on at the same time. So thank you for joining us. So Matt, we, we might as well get stuck into my favourite topic of all time, the international break, and the Lionesses in particular. Um, I just apparently there was only twenty three thousand there tonight out of a thirty thousand um, sort of capacity. Well, well they say thirty thousand tickets were sold, but only twenty three turned up. Um, I, I, and I know you've got a bit of agreements about the pricing issue, so I'm going to let you have a little, a little oh. go on that first of all, pal. Oh, where do we start? Yeah, I. Um... I mentioned this when I think the first game back after COVID for Lionesses was Southampton. And people were saying, oh, you're going, you're going. And I was like, a bit of a mooch anyway, Southampton. But I'd consider it. And uh, I had a look and it was like 20, 25 quid. And I thought, what the hell? For friendly, 20, 25 quid. So I was like, nah, rules me out. Not doing that and paying like 100 odd quid in fuel. Plus a likely cost of a hotel as well. So... That thing to that. And then um, there's a couple of people said, oh, yeah, we're going down to Wembley. Do you fancy that? And I was like, I'll have a look. It's Wembley. Why not? And again, 20, 25 quid. And uh, I warned about this, as did other people um, many months ago when they were, you know, sorting out prices for this season. And listen, it's not just Lionesses. You know, clubs have looked to cash in as well. And sadly, they've, uh, well, what's the word? They're, they're trying to take the mick out of the fans, I think is the politest way to put it. You know, they've, they've done without revenue for, what was it, 18 months before we came back and everything just ha hiked up prices. Um, you know, some clubs have doubled. I'm looking at championship clubs charging 10, 12, 14 quid. I just think it's ridiculous, pal. So do you know what? I'm glad only 23k turned up. It serves them right. I'm trying to use Wembley as the excuse and the fact that it's like a, a local rivalry, you know, with it being um, Northern Ireland. They just think it's disgusting, pal. Um, like I said to somebody yesterday, um, you know, went to the Germany game. It was a record crowd and it was a tenner. So why would I pay double plus more, 2025 20, for Northern Ireland? I don't care if it's a qualifier or whatever it is, you know, friendly. Couldn't give two hoops, you know. I think it's a disgrace. And you think some club season tickets you can get for 25 quid. You know, you've got travelling down there, it's an absolute nightmare. You've got to find a place to park. Getting back out of the place is an absolute nightmare. Public transport's not great either to there because it's just way out. And then you got 20, 25 pounds on top of it. Just no, it's it's poor. And that's why people are saying, oh, well, why is nobody turning up? COVID's not the excuse. The price is the excuse. It's ridiculous. You know, they could have played that anywhere else. They could have played it at Birmingham City or something, you know, play it there or I don't know, name me another small ground pal that's sort of Midlands way. I don't know. 
Villa Park, Park. Well, Villa Park would have been nice. But then again, the problem yeah, is I mean, though, you, the, problem, the problem is though, with all yeah. that, Matt, they're doing this right in the middle of sat back of the uh, football weekend for the men. You know, the Premier League, the Championship, the League One, the Football League. They're all playing. You know, um, and this is why I question the kickoff time as well. Why have the kickoff time slap bang in the middle of uh, Premier League matches ending and the half five game the Premier League put on uh, as well? Um, obviously, people that go and watch men's football as well, which is, let's be fair, it's quite a, uh, still a quite a big chunk of people that, that come over to watch the women's game are men's fans. So why are they why are they chose to put it on on a Saturday? When a full football, full of, when, a, when it's a, a full days of, uh, uh, of football fixtures are on from Premier League all the way down in the men's game, you know, it baffles me. They could have had it on a Friday when you've only got one game on, you know, where you probably would have had more turn up possibly as well. You could have had it on a Friday night, you know, uh, like Scotland played on a, on this, this last night, didn't they? So I don't understand why the FA will try and cram it well, in on the busiest day. Traditionally, for football fixtures to be played, I think the thing is, I mean, without being funny, Scotland don't tend to get anywhere near what England get anyway. Mm. Um, so you know, that uh, I get, but the thing is, I think what you've got to consider is, I agree with what you're saying about the time, but I, I just think seven o'clock might have been better because mm. I think I'm, I'm thinking Friday's a, a faff from work, especially true, in the capital, true. midweek's no use, a Sunday. I mean, to be fair, a Sunday would have worked if they'd have done it afternoon, like tomorrow at three o'clock could have been fine because it still allows you that travelling back time or two o'clock travelling back time for work the next day. But maybe they're thinking, actually, you know, I don't know, whatever, we'll not do it on a Sunday. But I, I do agree, Saturday's not ideal. And especially clashing with men's games. Um, I just I just think that, you know, five five fifteen, five thirty, anything around that time is just a recipe for disaster because you get your sky and your bigger games on, don't you? You get your early game and then you usually get your later game as well. So like you say, it's a bit bit bizarre, but I just think the whole Wembley thing was ridiculous anyway. Did they honestly think they were gonna sell out Wembley against Northern Ireland? Like really? You know, it, it was it was a record against Germany, but it wasn't a sellout, and that's Germany. So why why on earth would people do you know what I mean? Turn up for Northern Ireland. The, the thing is, though, mate, they could have been really clever with it. They could have gone, well, Man City played away this weekend. Well, we'll play at the Etihad or something, you know. Well, um, yeah. I, I, know, I, know, Matt, I know it's not I know it's not in the middle of the country, like like you say, like Birmingham, for example. Or even if Phillip Park was free, I'm, I'm not 100% sure if uh, Phillip had been playing home or away this weekend. I'm not 100% sure. But, uh, you know, any, any venue that, the you know, where the home team traditionally would be home are playing away from home, you could have maybe used them, maybe a little bit of common sense. Look, we're not going to fill out Wembley. It's a full fixtures for the men's. Uh, maybe we should take it on the road again, like they did with Southampton. You know, mm. it's probably been a wise to play down south, so hence why they chose well, Southampton for that game. But I don't understand the, the whole thing. Villa was away yesterday. Oh, Villa was away yesterday, sorry. Yeah, so there yeah, you are. Arsenal, then. Yeah. Apart, oh. then. yeah. Villa Park's what forty five thousand, so you know. Yep. Uh, Rob, Rob, there, bet three six five, just down the road from St George. That's good. That's a thirty odd thousand seat stadium, you know. Yeah, but this is this is the obsession, isn't there, with playing it down south? They always say that. Oh yeah, we've not played up north for years. I mean, listen, I'm not massively bothered, but the fact that you've got it at Wembley is just stupid. Like, yeah, spot on. Too many clowns. There is. Thing is, put put it the, the Midlands. It wouldn't it wouldn't really matter. Like I said, I'm not bothered where it's played. It's more the fact that it's it's inaccessible and they've just doubled the prices for no reason. You know, um, if it was against Sweden, we more want to see it. Perhaps. I mean, listen, the, the team's only one part of the issue for me. The reason why people aren't going is tickets, and I've seen plenty of it. You know, even back from the Southampton game, um, which was two weeks after the first game of the season when we had that ridiculous, we'll play a game, we'll stop and we'll do two weeks and then we'll get back and play three more and then we'll have another three weeks now or whatever it's been. So opposition one, but I think the main thing for me is tickets. You know, why? like I said, you can get a season ticket at a club for 25 quid in the championship. Why would you go and spend it on one Lionesses game at Wembley plus the cost I, of everything I, I, else? I don't know think if... About um... it, like kids, £2.50. Yeah, sorry, but I don't want to butt in, but I don't know if um, there's still uh, um, the FA still got debt on Wembley Stadium, you know, because obviously it came out, it came in overly priced, massively overly priced to the original budget they wanted to do it at. 
Um, hence why the FA Cup semi finals are now back at Wembley, and they have been what? for the last several years now. You know, instead of being at a neutral venue like Old Trafford or Villa Park, you know, that they, that they were at one point, and they're now back at Wembley Stadium because obviously the national stadium come in overpriced and way over budget, you know. Um, well, then that doesn't know explain the Southampton. That doesn't explain Southampton prices that are exactly the same as Wembley. So I don't even think mm. it's that. I think it's just poor overall. Yeah, it, it's it's it is a bit um, concerning though when you see that prices have been oh. hiked for both games. You know, um, especially one was a friendly, and one as you said is Northern Ireland. You know, no disrespect to Northern Ireland, and and it is it is um, it, it is like a local derby as you as you pointed out at the start of the show, you know, it, it's, um, you know, one of the home nations it was, as, as they used to say, you know, back in the day. Um, I just, I don't understand it myself. But the where thing was is, the right? where, where, I don't know what the kids were priced at, but uh, where well, was the that, that was what I was in the middle of saying. Sorry, well, that, that was what I was in the middle of saying before you, um, before you was mentioning it. Basically, the kids is two fifty, two pound fifty. Right. Now, if, if you think the next generation of fans is going to be children, how on earth are children going to be able to go without an adult if an adult doesn't want to go? You know, if an adult's not going to go at 20, 25 quid and a child's £2.50, that's a hell of a difference. You know, they've not chucked the kids' prices up and they've not stuck the OAP prices up. So your next generation of fans can get in, but they can't get there. They're priced out because the parents aren't willing to pay it. Like I say, they can come to Man United and they can get four tickets for twenty-five quid. So why, why, why would you go and waste it on one game for one adult at a place where it's going to cost you a damn sight more to park and travel as well? Unless you're local, do you know what I mean? It just, it, 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 I can't understand why you just rip adults off when they're the ones needing to take the kids and the kids, your next generation of fans. It just, it's beyond me, pal. It really is. You know, two fifty is a good price. You know, that is actually a really good price to be fair for kids, yeah. It is, but why 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 is a ticket jump from ten to twenty or twenty-five? Can't understand it. And they wonder why people don't turn up. It's a shock. Shambles. Um what, what, I know you I'm gonna I wanna put you on the spot a little bit. I know you've uh, well, I know you watched the majority of the game. I unfortunately I didn't watch it. I was watching uh, Premier League football. Uh but um I don't know. How do you rate England's performance tonight? You know, since first half, they're a bit sluggish by the, by, by the, yeah. by the sound of what I've been reading up on. Um, second half, a lot better, obviously. Beth Mead coming off the bench to be a hat trick hero. So, what's your overall assessment of the game? What have you seen? Yeah, I'd agree with first half. I think, obviously, half-time, nil-nil. It wasn't, it, it wasn't what you call a sort of a, a proper England performance or a typical input. Yeah typical England performance. There was there was bits that were disjointed, you know, and bits that were okay. But I just think, you know, I don't know whether we're sort of, what's the word? Like, we're too naive in the fact that we'd maybe absolutely hammer them. And I, I, I don't know whether that sort of was in the minds, whether it's, like I say, whether it's psychological or something like that. Um, but I, I just think, you know, for, for what it was, we got there in the end. Um, and obviously we got sort of four goals. But listen, I Ireland, to be fair to them, or Northern Ireland, should I say, you know, quite well organised at the start anyway, you know, in sort of the first half. Um, and then, you know, it, it was one of them where, again, you know, we've had chances. I, I think of like chances Leah Williamson had, and she could have had two, if not three goals. Um, keeper kept him in it as well, made some good saves. But again, it is, it's one of them where, you know, you've got to, take your chances and be a little bit more clinical. And I think um, Greenwood, it was, hit the bar um, as well. But, you know, if you don't take your chances and you, you're not clinical enough, you, you're you not going to get what you want. And, you know, we've, we've had over 30 odd shots in the game. Um, I mean, listen, I can't moan too much because we've got the 4-0 win. And obviously, Beth Mead had a quality game, got a hat-trick. And Beth England scored as well. So, we, you know, we, we got in the second half, we got into gear. Um, but again, we've had like a third of shots on target. Obviously, I've seen more of the ball, and it does. It seems to be more of a possession-based style now under um, Serena, which is is fine. But like I say, that the lack of clinical edge is a little bit worrying because if we come up against a better team, 
especially in a home Euros, you know, you come up against a France, a Germany, somebody like that, you need to take your chances. Um, but it, again, it's, you know, it's, it's a work in progress, isn't it? Obviously, we're only, what, we're second game under Serena. Um, so that that's going to be something that obviously I'm sure she'll look to address. But yeah, we'll, um, we'll not moan too much because, like I say, 4-0 four, four um, is good. And obviously, Mead's carrying on a club form into country, so that, that can only... Uh, benefit us a lot of um talk on me on, on our uh, whatsapp social group um could there's been a lot of talk over the summer as well and could you could you see her in a united shirt and possibly in the future apparently she's a big united fan uh, is it someone that you, you'd like to see at united is it someone that could maybe progress us i mean it depends because prior to this season i was like no not not a chance like didn't didn't want to um but well, this year, I think Arsenal changing the way they play and using her properly, you see a better player. And I listen, I saw her at Sunderland and she was banging in goals for fun, but she was a centre forward, not palmed out wide like um, John Montemoro did with her. And I think this year she's just got that confidence. She's got obviously a run of games, you know, last year and I think the year before she was sort of in and out the side. Um, it, it's difficult because, again, you know, players can excel at one club and struggle at another. And I, I think we'd have to look at the way we play to get the best out of people. You know, I think of Jackie Gronin now, and I, I don't believe we're getting the best out of her when she does play. You know, you, you look at what she can do and what she does and what she's done in the past. And then you look at the way we're playing now. And I, I really don't think it suits a game. You know, you only have to watch Jackie yesterday for Holland. Okay. They were playing a, a terrible team and they won. I think it finished eight nil in the end, but you know, she was quality and it, it's just that sort of, balance of can that player fit our system because clearly we want to play at club level a certain way does she fit that and we've seen the under one manager at Arsenal she didn't fit that and it wasn't great but now under a different manager of a different style bit of confidence and belief you know she, she's doing really well um on this form obviously you take her because she's scoring and assisting for fun um but like I say one I don't think it will happen and two I don't think the way we play would suit the way she wants to play because we'd need somebody alongside Alessia and I wouldn't want to farm Beth Mead out wide and ask her to cut in because I don't think that's doing her any favours, to be honest. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it? But I don't it is, mate. Well, even... It's just one of the chats that came up and I thought, well, that'd be another question to throw into the fire there. Yeah. Um, I, don't want to, I don't want to Arsenal fans crying, you know. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not particularly... <laughs> A massive Beth Mead fan, and I don't particularly absolutely want her either. So before the Arsenal fans start crying, you know, <laughs> it was just a, a you know a hypothetical question. Um, but back to a proper question and a proper United player. What do you make of Alatou's performance tonight? Hmm. For what you've seen, I'm glad she started. To be fair, I'm 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 let you, I'll, I'll link in uh, link in a little bit of old knowledge. Should we say our prior? I say prior knowledge, you know, whatever you want to call it. But I'm just buzzing that one, she started at Wembley as well, and two, yeah. she got through the whole game. Um, and a lot of people have said, you know, obviously it, it's likely going to be between sort of her and um, Frank Kirby. But obviously the way we're playing now is we, we don't really play with a 10, do it? It's a 4-3-3. <laughs> so Tooney's out. Um, she was out on the left. Obviously, Frank Kirby was on the other side. So listen, fitting them both in. Brilliant, you know. Let's, um, John. <laughs> you've upset John now. I know. I know. I've got the <laughs> best. He's number one fan here, aren't we? <laughs> Sorry, John. I do apologise, oh. mate. Um, yeah, I think just like I say, you know, her, her on that wide, um, wide sort of position of the midfield three. I say wide. It's not massively wide, is it? Because it's not like the proper expanded. It's more a little bit compact, but it's it's not too bad. It sort of allows her to. What's the word like? Get get a knowledge or an understanding of sort of a different role. Um, a lot of people aren't a fan of a wide, but uh, listen, I, I think it's working at the minute for England, and I don't know whether that's because of the sort of the quality in and around her or what. But listen, you know, it, it, she she's more than held her own, and so far in the international stage, she's done well. You know, she got a goal obviously in the last game that was down at Southampton. Um, she made a debut at St George's Park, funnily enough, against Northern Ireland and was given that penalty and scored that. So I'm I'm just absolutely delighted. You know, I think she'll be one of those going to the Euros without a doubt in the summer for me. She has to be. Um, I think what's great is as well, obviously, tonight, 
um, playing it behind Lauren Hemp. I think, you know, Hemp's a quality player. And I think what, what's good is, you know, if there's a point when, you know, Tuna may need to overlap at some point, then she could do potentially. But what, what a sort of a left-hand side that is. Her and Lauren Hemp linking up down that left. Kirby and Paris on the right um, is good. And then you've got Leah Williamson, who centre mid, which might surprise people. But to be fair, her passing ability, you know, is is great. And I'm sure that front three of White, Hemp and Paris will massively benefit. So it's interesting. Uh, um, I'm still not a fan of Daly at right back, nor am I a fan of Greenwood at centre half. I think if you're, if you're playing Daly, don't play at right back. Obviously, bronze is injured, but, you know, we shouldn't, shouldn't be playing it there anyway. Um you know, Leah Williamson, I'm sure, would be able to do a job at right back if need be and put somebody else in centre mid. Um, but yeah, I just think I, I wouldn't have played Greenwood and Stokes. It'd have been an either or for me and then start with Lottie Woman Moy. Obviously, she came on near the end, but it's like, you know, we had Kira Walsh out on the bench, could have played the centre mid role. Stanny could have played it. There's, there's options, really. But yeah, just to go back to your original point of Tooney, mate, absolutely buzzing. Um, had a good game, but yeah, we'll see what it brings. You know, she's still finding a way of lionesses, isn't she? I thought John Hume, I thought he was a big England fan, mate, but that that surprised me. He's hoping for an over nine result too. Um but yeah, um I just think Phil Neville's I'm, got I'm, everybody I'm, off, pal. Mate, he's the greatest English co- greatest England coach ever in. Don't 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 be dissing my Phil. Anyway, um <laughs> I was going to, maybe lost to my train of thought then. <laughs> but I was going to say, I, I'm pleased for two, though. You know, if there's any player that uh, has deserved uh, rapid rise to start him in this England side, I think it is two, to be fair, mate. You know, um, she's absolutely nailed it for United. Um, and, and it's nice to see that her hard work has been rewarded with England call ups and with playing full 90 minutes for the national side. You know, all right, you know, I'd rather. Mm. I'd rather that any United player was involved, you know what I mean? We'd wrap up a cotton one, we'd go ready for the next league game. But obviously, from a player's point of view, they all want to play for their countries, you know, they all want to play for the national team. So it's just uh, really, really pleasing to see a player that's actually on form getting the opportunities for England instead of the same old rubbish that we've seen from England in the past, England managers in the past, pick your players on name rather than merit. So, um, yeah. It's good to see that. It's good to see that, you know. Um, and we're going to get on to this captaincy bit now and all another juicy topic about the captaincy. Um, well, <laughs> should uh, Steph Horton be stripped of this captaincy for, perma- for permanently? I don't think no one's got the balls to do it, personally. Uh, they don't want to upset poor old Steph, you know what I mean? Um, but should it be stripped from her? Should it be... Because England have been doing very well without her as captain, you know. So, what do you make of the captaincy situation? Interesting, isn't it? They were debating this this afternoon on Football Focus. And obviously, you know, like you said, with Steph out, with Lucy Bronze out, with Jordan Nobbs not yet fully fit. Um, they've chosen Leah. And I, I like you, I, I think it's interesting. Um, obviously, with those players out, it's like, you know, you, you obviously, you're not going to pick them, are you? But I think when, when they are back, for me, there's a big decision to be made. Personally, I would give it to somebody else, but that's because I feel, for me, that Steph's time in the national team is done. Um, and I'll, I'll put that out there now. It's To be fair, in, in my head, it's been done for a while. I just don't think she shows the same form that she has done for club. And I think even club, you could probably say she's struggling. Now, granted, she's getting on a little bit, um, she's obviously got, well, she has got, not obviously, she has guns going on at home, obviously, with her husband as well, which is understandable. And I just, she, she just looks a shadow of a player. From what I saw sort of two, three, four years ago for club and country, she, she doesn't look what she was. Um, obviously, she's still chipping in with the free kicks and things like that. But I just, uh, I, I'd now move it on. And if we're not giving it bronze, then I'd agree that Leah Williamson is a perfect candidate for captain. Um, had the armband now last couple of games so why not um but yeah I, I don't know like bronze yeah Williamson yeah you know there's probably one or two more you could add in there as well but I think they they for me should be the main two candidates for it anyway um 
And Leah's up and coming. Obviously, I say up and coming. She's not because she's been around a while. But in terms of Lionesses and becoming a captain, she's up and coming. She's still very young. You know, quality, quality player. So there's years ahead for Leah to develop to an even better centre half. And listen, she's probably already one of England's best anyway. Um, so, yeah, I think for me, I'd uh, give her a go. You know, her and bronze just rotates it. If one of them's injured, obviously, you know. Um, what's this? A new head coach, new captain would be a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, new head coach took the captain from Case and gave it Steph. Yeah, spot on. They did actually. Um that that did happen. Um that's how Steph became captain. So yeah, I think I just think if we if we want to go in this new direction now of new new young players, um then that's the way to go. Obviously, Leah's early twenties. Um, but like I say, you know, she's been playing she was playing when I first started watching about 14, 15 as a young well, a youngster. Um, and so is Jordan Nobbs. So, yeah, I think for me, just I just like how Leah plays. Like, she doesn't seem to panic and flap. You know, like I say, her passing is very, very good at tackling as well. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't see why not. You know, I can't think of any valid reason why you just go backwards and give it back to Steph. You know, like I say, now I think there's better options. You know, mentioned before, Lottie Wubben Moy. You know, I think for me, we should be trying her as a partnership with Leah at the back, like they do for club. Um, I mean, I say they do for club. It, it depends because sometimes it's BT. But give them two a go at Lionesses. Because um, for me, Millie Bright doesn't reproduce her Chelsea form either. There seems to be this kind of thing where some players are quality for the club and they're lacking for the country. So if we talk about sort of going forwards, new eras, looking ahead to the Euros and beyond, you know, we've, we've got to start changing things. We cannot stick with the same old letdowns like you mentioned before, and players that are a form and players that are just getting picked because they're the size of the club they're at or because of the name, you know, it's it's not what they've done five, six, seven years ago or what they've done three years ago. It's now. So I'm playing that because she was absolutely spot on there, I think. Go on. Uh, this uh, Monday game, I don't think the captain does, you know, I look at captaincy these days, you look, look at United's captaincy, in <laughs> Katie's element. I'm not speaking uh, on that. <laughs> mate, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to drag her up, mate, but I don't think there's no leaders in the game anymore. There's no, like, you think of the captains in the past, and I mean, I, I, I'm an We've old been guy. on about it before. The people, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're looking at people like Brian Robson for England and for Man United, proper captain. Roy Keane for Man United, Republic of Ireland, proper captain. Alan Shearer for Newcastle, England, proper captain. You know, people that lead a team by example, you know, lead a team get in referees' faces, talk, communicate, drag their teams by the scruff of the neck um, and put, bring them on to the next level. I don't think there is that, that, there is that type of player anymore in, in the game of football. Um, but, I don't know, a good thing about captain as well, mate, is there no other candidates? Uh, maybe uh, I've seen uh, Ellen White's name has been, um, you know, uh, banded around as well. Is there no other? Is there no other uh, sort of maybe forerunners for the captaincy if they choose to do choose to take off Steph Orton? Well, like I say, obviously you know Leah Williamson um, mentioned before, obviously about Lucy Bronze. You know, I suppose potentially you could really, like you say, if you wanted to, you could chuck Helen White in there. Some could say Greenwood. Um, controversial as that may be to United fans. Um, Jordan Nobbs, uh, yeah, it's one of them. You kind of, you know, you want you want your captain available at all sort of times and points if possible, and people that aren't past it and fully fit. So I, I think if it, if you're looking between sort of Leo Williamson, Jordan Nobbs, Lucy Bronze, Alex Greenwood as them four, an outside mm -hmm. chance maybe of Ellen White because to be fair with Ellen White again, she's getting on. You know, yeah. Beth England scored today. Beth England is probably the future. Um, of that forward line, obviously, Hemp's young, Paris is young. You've got Chloe Kelly when she's fully fit to come in. That's a sort of you know, a forward and attacking player. Um, Russo didn't come on today, you know, there's chances there. Um, likes of Stanway are quite attacking, um, you know, so the, the list goes on. But I think, yeah, any, any of them people that I've mentioned, I wouldn't be against having the captaincy. I just think it's like I said, it's time to move on now, but. In terms of anybody else, it's it's a struggle, isn't it? Really, you know. Do, you, do some people say, "Oh, I don't like the goalkeeper having it." Some people don't like forwards having it. So there's a shout about the goalkeeper, though, because obviously there's a, there's another big debate: the goalkeeper situation for England. 
Um, Mary Oates has been pretty solid, you know, with a, with a game time so far, you know, for England as well. And being, I said, a really solid start to the season for United. You know, people might point out, well, I can say that we got battered by Chelsea, but let's be fair, though. You know, none of, their, none of the goals were her fault. You know, I yeah, saw yeah. defensive errors and um, we gifted them goals. You know, poor old goalkeeper can't do much about that. People bearing down on her and shooting at point back range when we're gifting possession to people. But, you know, the goalkeeper situation for England as well uh, is going to be um, very interesting. Because uh, there was another name mentioned, Roebuck, you know, as captain as well. You know, pretty oh, experienced like player now. Yeah. Uh, not no, for me. Think... Not, not listen. I don't mind goalkeepers as captain. I'll put that out there now. But Ellie Rope, no, just not Robo. I think she's the thing Robo, is, no. she's just no. She's got the experience, but not at international level. She's played a lot for mm. club, but I just think no, she's not really been on the scene long enough. You know, um, obviously Stu mentioned about captain not carrying the same thing. For me, you need the experience at club and country. You need to have the respect of people. Obviously, don't you as well? You have to have. A... A, a little bit about you know lead by example and off the pitch and I just think Ellie comes across really quiet like you know like a, a quiet person one that's just sort of reserved and, and laid back and I, I think you can't have somebody that's too laid back a bit of like a, a man don't you like a little bit of psycho uh, like you mentioned you know you mentioned Keen I'm thinking like Stuart Pearce people like that people that really sort of have a go and um, you know kick off when needed but um yeah yeah i was saying um just just summed it it's, um matt's gremlins because he's on ntl world again uh, <laughs> uh are you back matt is he back is he back no, this is I'm the problem when you have oh, dialed yeah. up for the band. Oh, is no, it back? I just saying, back. Just saying hey. that um, commands that respect. You know? Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you're back, by the way. Um, Stu Wallace caught another point, and he nine caps. This is what I kept saying about United when people have questioned Katie Zellum's captaincy when I said I don't see any leaders in the United team. Totally correct. You need, uh, you, need, uh, you need a handful of caps on that football pitch, not just the one with the armband, or as he puts here, one for the coin toss, you know. Needles all over the pitch, you know. And, um, yeah, it's totally true again. Uh, John Foster's MUFC. Let's get it right. It's Mary Earps' number one for him now. Yeah, you know. Why not? Why not? You know, you've got, to take, you've got to take your chances when your rivals are injured, when your rivals for that number one shirt's injury. Um, here's Bond for you. Two years of future captain has the ability and the fortune on the pitch. What do you make of that one? Well, his NTL was unfrozen. <laughs> like I said before, um, with Ellie Roebuck, I think you need... I can see his eyes moving. I don't know if he's back or not. <laughs> oh, the gremlins are back. Gone go through near enough, 30, near enough half hour, and it, everything was right. L little glitchy at times, and now it's uh, <laughs> for his 3G on, lad. <laughs> oh, my God. I thought my broadband was bad the other day on uh, on Cup uh, last week on the men's channel. Um, but it was StreamYard's issue, not mine. It kept booting me out. And then I know a few others that had problems with StreamYard that night as well who, who, was, who was streaming on a different channel. So, uh, but yeah, uh, I like this comment though. Captain, who's exactly, exactly. That's my point. Captain, to get around people, get around the officials as well when a player's uh, had a, a booking without no yellow or someone that is actually on a yellow card that needs to be spoken to again, you know. Are you, are you back, Matt? I think we're back. Are you back, fella? I think so. Set the night some Wi-Fi just out the one, pal. I know. I just wanted to get you the, be. Your, your opinion on this one too. In the future, Captain, with the ability the fortitude on the pitch. To make that one, that's a good, interesting shout for the future. Yeah, I don't see. 
Yeah, I don't see why not. I think, um, again, you need the experience, really. A few more years in England under a belt. Um, and yeah, looking at potential leader, I don't you know, like the respect. I think coming in as a newbie is hard enough without being sort of burdened with a captaincy as well. Um, but yeah, listen, I won't rule that out. I certainly won't rule that out of later. Is that your microphone? My days. <laughs> won't rule that out later in the future, anyway. Uh, Bob says, put your 3G on, lad, by the way. <laughs> uh, I got 3G. It seems. Anyway, it looks like you're running on 2G, never mind 3G. <laughs> Uh, Joe, Joe wants to know what do you think of five players being called up from United to the England squad I'm assuming that's what he's on about four of them deserve it that's a nice simple short answer isn't it? I thought he was going to go to well, no, some people. no. Um, <laughs> there we go that's better now you're muted um yeah, I think five five in the squad is good. Um, you know, I, I tweeted earlier about having Manning and Blundell there, and I think that will happen. I can see Karen's mentioned Blundell in there for captain. Um, hey, Rob, got more than enough data, pal. It's a Saturday night in Manchester, pal. You know what it's like. Midweek's fine, mate. It's Saturday nights that are the killer. Um but yeah, I think you know, good, good that we've got a big representation in there of um, of players, um, you know, and it's it's only going to benefit them as well, especially the youngsters, you know, getting called up. Absolutely buzzing to see um, Russo back in there, and I'll I'll talk about her in a little bit. But you know, again, Manning as captain, why not? I think Manning again just needs that consistency, get some call ups, get them regular caps, um, and then yeah, why not? But um, I'd say I don't mean to be harsh, but while she did ask me about, um, you know, deserving it, then it's one of them where, um, you know, I think overall, apart from a certain one, it's correct, isn't it? But that one's only there due to injuries. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, I think that's that really. But, yeah, Benny, you can uh, jump back in now, pal, if you sorted your mic. Well, I'm hoping the mic's sorted out, mate. I think I need a new mic. Well, that's know. fine. I just couldn't hear, and I thought it was me, but it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think to be fair, though, I think my mic's on its last leg, so I managed to invest in a new mic, to be honest with you. Um, spot on, Matt. So, somebody agreeing with you, as always, Matt, as I always agree with you as well. Um, Not always. I mean, People disagree, and that's fine. Well, yeah. I, I just, yeah. I'd rather have Jackie or Leah as captain for mine instead of Zellum. At club level, yeah, club absolutely. Level, think, yeah, uh, but, yeah, internationally, like I say, tune in the future potentially. Um, Roebuck, no, but I just want to go back to your goalkeeping thing very quickly because I, I yeah, think course. it could be interesting because when Roebuck does come back, she's not going to have had that running games and be fully fit. So, I, I don't think, as good as she is, I don't think she should be thrown in, she should be made to fight for that. So, that, that for me is going to be interesting. Will the manager have a backbone and say, well, actually. You know, Mary's played, she's kept clean sheets, she's doing well for club. What happens there? And it'll be sort of, you know, very interesting come, I don't know when she's due back, November, December, whenever. Um, that run-up of sort of games now, because there won't be long, if you think when January comes around, there's not going to be a huge amount of time till the Euros. There won't be a huge amount of international games either. We might have a few friendlies because the qualifiers will have to stop eventually. Um so yeah, that that for me will be very very interesting to see who gets the nod. Absolutely, uh, and, and Stu Chuck in his typical. I still play football at his tender age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Stu all over. So I love the guy. Um, why not? Why not? Why not? Um, where where do where, where do you see the where do you see the future for England international games? Then should it? Obviously, the majority will be played at Wembley. It is deemed the home of English football. Um, but would you like to see it on the road a little bit more? Would you like to see the ticket prices come yeah, down as well? That, listen, well, yeah, that too. I think, listen, Wem Wembley is only the home of football by alleged name, isn't it? We all know the home of football is the North West. So let's, let's, just, get, let's just get this Wembley home of football just 
in the bin, lad. I'm sorry. But yeah, I think on the road, I'm I'm sick of seeing like, you know, just people I suppose just they've have, they've got every right to complain, but I just think people being shafted and priced out of it, you know, ticket prices is one thing, but constantly down south, you know, move it around, start up north, start northeast of summit, then come down to Yorkshire, come down to northwest, midlands, south, and just repeat on loop and south coast. You know, it doesn't need to be constantly Wembley, MK, Dons, Southampton, Wembley, MK, Dons, Chelsea, Arsenal, or whatever else they're going to think about chucking out. You know, I think rotate it round, but the tickets, they're never going to reduce tickets, pal. They need to, but they won't. So whether people want to pay 20 quid and sort of, you know, chuck chuck the money at it that way is, is their thing. But I, I just think it's weird when I've just, well, I say I've just bought, I've not, I've had my Euro tickets for a while, but I'm getting Euro games for half the price of England games. You know, we've got the semi-final at Bramall Lane and that wasn't 20, 25 quid. You know, the final, I think, was only, what was the final? I think the final was probably about that actually. Um, Cheapest chips for me anyway, because uh, my son's got a disability, so cheap as chips yeah. for me. But even still, though, like regardless of like you know other tickets, like for adults, like, I can't believe you can get a final cheaper than you can get a bloody qualifier against Northern Ireland. But this is the bizarre thing about it. This is why the FA have just become greedy, and clubs have become greedy because, like I said, you know you were at Durham and. You you said same as me when we got moved from that bloody Tim Pot corner. People are paying hundred pound for some of that, you know, hundred pound for that for a season. It's bizarre, it really is. But yeah, I think I don't think you'll see prices going backwards. I do believe though it does need to be rotated because if you look at that England team, most of it, at least a good three quarters, the talents all come from the northeast anyway. And I'm sure if John's still tuned in, he'll he'll um you know he'll he'll know that anyway. But you know he'll. It'll be buzzing. They've got a game at Sunderland, and um, you know I went to one a couple of years back against Brazil at Middlesbrough, and you know they've they've had them dotted about. But I do. It just needs to be like some sort of schedule where it's rotated because people are just losing the patience with not only prices but just the aggro of getting to places. You know, I think just bizarre, and they need to think about planning. Do you know what you said at the very start? I think if you can get your planning right. Listen, you can't always avoid a clash, and I understand that, but at least have a think about, you know, when's the best time. Like I say, tomorrow at 2, 3 o'clock wouldn't have been too bad. Finish around 5-ish. You can be home for 9, 10-ish, depending on where you live, you know, if you're sort of up this way. Um, but, yeah, it's a little bit a bit of a strange one, to be honest. But, hey-ho, if that's the way it's going to be and they're going to look to cash in and whack up all the prices, they're going to suffer, aren't they? And like you said, Benny, 23,000, they're expecting 30. That means 7K are likely freebies that haven't bothered to turn up that they've probably had to give away due to nobody wanting to buy tickets. You know, what do you do? Oh, absolutely, mate. Uh, That's fire, doesn't uh, it? Yeah, yeah, exactly, mate. Uh, and I know I don't want to uh, seem like I'm going back over onto Tooney again, but I've just re reread our, our WhatsApp messages from earlier, and I know you wanted to uh, touch upon Tooney and Lessie coming up for the age groups to go for, together for England. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll let you go on with that, mate, because that must be quite a proud moment that uh, two two uh, really good mates, if you like, they've come up for the age groups together, and now they've smashed it at both. Uh, mm. Manchester United, the biggest club in the world, and both uh, in the senior Lionesses and squad. So take it away, pal. Yeah, no, it was just like I was saying before, and I did say I'd come back to this, and I'm glad you brought it up now. But I just think I, uh, well, obviously, you know, known Tuni since she was mini, shall we say. But um, I think with Alessia, I first saw her talent when she was in that um, under 17 World Cup that was in Jordan. Um, and she was, you know, she was 16, as was Tooney. And there's quite a few Lionesses that are sort of household names now that were in that squad. I think of Georgia Stanway, I think of Lottie Woburn Moy, I think of Ellie Roebuck, um, Lois Joel that's at West Ham. She's not sort of in the England setup at the minute, but, you know, she was involved. And I just think it's nice that they've been friends for so long and years and they finally, well, Alessia's ended up at United, which is, you know, over the moon with that. And I just think they've they've both progressed and it's been nice because what you saw before Alessia was injured was she was in that England setup and she was getting picked when she was in um, America. And, you know, she she played 
Um, and then obviously got a couple of a uh, couple of bad. Oh dear! Is, is his NTR world froze up again? Um, <laughs> he'll be on the Manchester connection, but mine's uh, mine's fine. Um, yeah, see you tonight, Stu, mate. Uh, thanks for thanks for tuning in and watching, mate. I appreciate it as always, pal. And I'll speak to you tomorrow night, pal. Um, yeah, uh, I, I, Matt's obviously definitely froze up big style. I'm frozen up, maybe. Oh, here he is. You're back, lad. <laughs> yeah, I'm back. You went off screen then, which was bizarre. I don't know. You just froze up. I don't. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so, so it's gone wrong anyway. Uh, no, I was here. I was you... just on about the link up, and then next minute you disappeared, and I come up big on. You're frozen, and I'm like, am I still alive, or is it my, or is it my end? That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey, it's a lot of minute on this show, isn't it? I can't even you think know, what I was saying because I didn't realise I'd frozen par just suddenly disappeared <laughs> and panicked. But um, no, I was, I was just on about the link up. I was saying, you know, it's great that they can link up at United and now hopefully for England, you know, get Alessia back fit. Um, and hopefully, like I say, she can add to a cap that she already gained. Um, and yeah, it's just that's the future, isn't it? And it's like these partnerships, like I talked about before, you can get Leah Williamson and Lottie Wubben Moy playing together regularly at Arsenal, that's a centre-half pairing and, you know, that's massively important. And if you can get your sort of your attacking link-ups going as well and them little partnerships at club level that can carry into country. But like I say, you know, just delighted that Alessia was back in there. It was funny because actually the last conversation I had um, at LSV after that City game, I think it was with Max and someone else, might have been Sarah. And I said, oh, I said, what, what, What's the chances of um, Russo making the Euro squad? And they both said, oh, I don't think she'll make the Euro squad. You know, it might just be a little bit beyond her. And funnily enough, she was in the next um, next England squad. So that that's pleasing. So if she can force her way into the Euros, you know, fantastic. But seeing them, like I say, as 16-year-olds coming through the ranks for England and then all the way to seniors, it, it's quite rare that it happens for so many. And I think from that, like I say, that squad, I, I love talking about that squad rave off the squad because there's so many talented players and to see so many of them coming through as well like I say is quite a rare thing um from like one select group so yeah that was just my little 10 piece off like I say delighted for two <laughs> is he froze up again I swear it's not me it's him I swear <laughs> oh my days Oh, I tell you. Uh, <laughs> oh, that is bad. Well, what wouldn't be a show without Matt Freeze about 20 million times, would it? Hey, let's be fair. <laughs> um, but yeah, he has a point, though. It is good to see people coming through together, you know. Uh, for the national teams uh, and through uh, at club level as well. And it can only mean that. Um, Oh no, what's John Foster saying here? Uh, you don't get this in Birmingham, Matt. No, no, we, you can't build roads in Birmingham, though, can you? Um, but yeah, I should have a drink down while I'll be absolutely dr hammered drunk by now, you know, every time he seems to freeze up. <laughs> I think he might be back in a set, though. Um, here he is, he's back again, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> Scouts are better. Are better. Hey. Hey, listen, Rob, if I start robbing internet, mate, I'm pretty sure mine would be better. Honestly, it was Tuesday, right? Tuesday and Thursday, it was fine. Get to a Saturday when, like, World and its wife's on it. Like, <laughs> I swear. Like, the thing is, you know what it's like, Benny, in Manchester. It's bad Wi-Fi. No one goes out till, like, 11 o'clock. So everyone's no. sat on Wi-Fi here. It just absolutely mullers it. Midweek, I'm cool because nobody goes on it midweek, did it? And it's just like, you know... Um, let's answer that. Can Russo get ahead of England or White? You did say White's getting thing, on it, Yeah, I did. Um, well, what I was going to say was the trouble is we play a 4-3-3 three, three now, not a 4-4-2, a four, four, which isn't a problem, but Alessia is not a wide player. I don't like... I think we played... Was it Leicester? She came on and played wide. Yeah. No. 
and she said it herself when she signed. She said, I'm a centre forward. I can occasionally play in behind. But even even in behind, listen, she's not one of them that should. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. I'll tell you. Yeah, I agree. England doesn't get enough time as it is, to be, to be honest with you as well. And she's one hell of a forward. Um, I did say, like, in the summer, if there's any uh, part exchange deal to be done, you know, uh, with the Lauren James deal, I'd, I'd take Beth England all day long. Um, I think she's a cracking, cracking forward, cracking striker. Those with the back of the net is without without questioning it. Um, I don't know who's coming on here now. I've got two mats here. I've got two. I've got a frozen mat in the top corner, and then I've got you. You must be on your phone now, yeah? Ah, there we go. Yeah, get rid of the other one, pal. I'll stick to my phone. No, you've already done it, mate. It's already gone. <laughs> Honestly. Um, yeah, so I was saying, for me, like, Russo is an out-and-out forward. None of this wide rubbish um, or anything else. So, you know, she could potentially get in ahead of Ellen White. Ellen White's not always fully fit these days. Um, you know, hasn't really set the world alight when she has got on the pitch for City, you know, she's not banging in the goals for fun, so for me, if it's out of two, then it's out of Russo or Beth England, but if we can get the two of them on the pitch together and sack off this 4-3-3 rubbish, you know then I think um, <laughs> he always puts me off my comments, doesn't he, with these bloody stupid things, he can't wait till I finish what I'm yeah, saying yeah, I can't <laughs> <it. laughs> <sighs> No, I'm just reading now because it says on it, it says on my things, some destinations won't connect. So I'm like, you're telling me. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm just going to I'm just gonna go back and say, yeah, it's between Russo and White. And if we can get them both on, then great. Robert's just throwing me now because I'm busy trying not to laugh. <laughs> you me? Uh, you know. But yeah, um, like I say, England, England needs more game time at Chelsea before she's a regular. So maybe that's a potential for Russo. Maybe Tuesday. Whack Lessie up top. Um, Who they play Tuesday? Uh, is it Austria? Austria. I think. I don't know. It clashes in my bloody show. <laughs> the lionesses, honestly. Can't get the... Watch uh, along. Watch along, lad. <laughs> you know, watch along. You know what? I don't even know what time the kickoff is, but... Um, Probably clashes. It usually does. Usually clashes on my show. They usually whack it out about half six, seven o'clock. And I swear they do it on purpose because it always kills the viewers because you get about a few people live and then you just get bloody everyone has to do the replay because bloody lionesses decide they want to fucking be on telly when I am. <laughs> Poor. Anyway, before I wrap the show up, anyway, because we are getting to an hour. I know you're on your phone, so I don't want to kill your data too much. Uh, no, it's all right. That's just um, Rob pulling your leg back. Plenty of data, pal. He's just winding you up. Oh, I know, mate. I know. <laughs> um, but if obviously... I'm corrected. I've just Googled it. It's Latvia, then Austria. Oh, it's Latvia, is it? Is that a Wembley Latvia. again, I take it? No, it's, it away? Away. it's away. No, it's away. It's away. Bloody half past six. What a stupid time. Half six. Uh, we'll, we'll clash for you. We are uh, start time, won't it? Oh, Typical. well, it doesn't matter. Never mind. Um, what I was going to say before we wrap up, because I, I know that you, you're... Um, I was going to say you're at FC United tomorrow, so if you maybe give folks a little bit of info for them to come down and watch that, if they've got a bit of free time on their hands. Yeah, obviously, if they've got a bit of free time, like, hey, listen, we've even managed to get the Brummie to come up as well. Um, yeah, so FC United tomorrow, there'll be myself, Gareth, John, um, I think, I'm sure Andy's coming as well, but don't quote me on that. Um, yeah, going to FC, obviously, it's one of these sodden international breaks. Um, there's not a lot to do. So going down to FC, doing some coverage. Um, there is a reason we're going. We can't go into too much detail. That will become a little bit clearer sort of tomorrow, Monday. And always oh, bringing up another Brummie. Here we go. That's the Brummie that supports three different teams, four or five different teams. Ah, that explains it. Right. Well, that's why then. Um, obviously, Andy, as I thought. But um, yeah, there is, a, there is a specific reason that Johnny's coming up. Um, because normally he'd be absolutely throwing himself at them Stourbridge people. Um, but no, there, there is a reason, like I say, that will become apparent sort of 
Sunday, Monday, and especially Tuesday. So we've got a little a little thing going on there, which is great that we're hoping to announce very soon. Um, and yeah, just exciting time. So obviously that's tomorrow. Content on Instagram, a little bit on Twitter as well as per. Um, I can say a show on Tuesday, sort of linked to National League, FC United. John will do a little bit on Stourbridge. Um, and yeah, that that's sort of the plan for, like I say, tomorrow. And it links in nicely with Tuesday. Absolutely. Um, you wonder why I'm up there tomorrow because I'm actually at a proper game tomorrow. United Liverpool, Old Trafford. Um, hey, well, this is like a B Tech version because they are playing a team of Scousers, so we can, we can have that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah listen, uh, let's hope for two results for the uh, for the Mancunian half of the uh, Northwest, and uh, not Absolutely. the Scouse half of the Northwest. Day. Eh? Um, two positive results tomorrow. Um, and also schedule going up tomorrow as per usual, mate. The schedule and obviously yeah, the... so yeah. So what I'm going to do is obviously in the morning there'll be the um, the weekly catch up as per. Mm-hmm. Um, that'll probably be yeah, ten half ten ish maybe. Um, yeah, schedule will be up tomorrow evening. Obviously, like I say, you know, Tuesday links in with tomorrow, and there is a reason for that. I can't see too much on it yet. Monday we're talking a little bit about um, ex players slash loans. So obviously. 31st, Natalie um, and a, a crew of people are going down to Bristol and they're going to watch, um, obviously, Fran Bent is on loan there. Mm-hmm. Amy Palmer's an extra red in the play in Sheffield, Tara Bourne. So, obviously, they're getting to watch that. So, Monday is a little bit more geared towards that. You know, Amy Palmer's now captain at Bristol. Fran Bentley's doing really well on loan. Um, Tara Bourne's doing well at Sheffield. So, that, that's going to be really good um, Monday. We've got um, Shahan back on from the Bristol City Supporters Club. Um, he's come to chat to us Monday. So, yeah, busy week as per. And obviously, Wednesday, Natalie, Thursday, Nat and John, Friday Fans Forum. Um, and, yeah, we're back Saturday and Sunday is here, there and everywhere. Like I say, summer at Bristol. Um, I'm going down to Stoke um, with Rob. Well, I say with Rob. Rob will meet me there because, obviously, Rob's from Stoke. But I'm going down to Stoke. They're playing Nottingham Forest. Um, and you know, we've I've seen Forrest before, uh, myself and Gareth have, so we're gonna continue to build relationships there, you know, and help promote them too. So that'll be something nice because that'll just be a little bit different. Never been to watch Stoke Women, so yeah, and obviously, I know one of Forrest plays as well, so catch up with her. And then, I'm trying to think, oh, John's off to Stower, so three, three different lots of content next week. Um, mm. so yeah, busy, busy week, busy times, but we love it, so we do it. <laughs> keep you busy during the internationals thank god absolutely mate, absolutely and uh, uh i might join one of, you, one of them games next sunday because united play on saturday away to spurs on the 30th so i might Love join it. one of you somewhere i don't know where but um probably you might go, t- um, you could go left wing you could go and watch sheffield play wolves if you like lad <laughs> well yeah true sheffield wolves, fair, yeah. wolves are good i want to go and watch wolves this year good side but um no, I welcome to join you, ever lad, as always. Just uh, take your pick. Don't go and join him, though, bloody Star or whatever. No, I was about to say, was Star. I wish he'd, uh, I wish he'd be more that passionate about United. <laughs> oh, Star. So- come on, where's your United thing? We're playing Liverpool tomorrow, so where's your come on, United up, up the Reds? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no, I love John, really. You know, he has he a soft knows the wind and he up, protects it well. He does, he does, he does take it well, you know. Um, but I now do us for this week, pal, unless you've got anything else you want to add. Yeah, can we stop adding more international breaks? Just a, a very quick one before oh. it turns into another half hour. Don't want no more added, it can sod off. Sick of it, don't want any at all. No, Thank no, extras, there's no five, job. just just sack it now. It's boring, nobody cares. Hey, mate, before, we ridiculous. Do, before we do go, I uh. Um, you can Agreed. tell the person that wants to work uh, a World Cup every two years is a no. yank. You can no, tell it's a yank. Of course, it is. Of course their, it is. their club game is shite, and their club teams are shite over there. Uh, uh, their club uh, teams wouldn't even survive in the English leagues, mate. Um, the crap. Uh, let's be fair. That's the only reason why they want it. They're exposed for uh, the, the USA because no, no. that's all they care about over there. No, uh, you know? uh, and uh, mate. The club game, okay. you might as well have the European Super League. You're going to do that. No difference between the two. The, Just the thing FIFA is, is greedy. what it is is because FIFA don't earn as much money as UEFA. People 
Big, yeah. What are you want about Ben? You wait for um, a lot more money out of their competitions than FIFA because well, you think FIFA World Cups once every four years, whereas you wait for have got a lot of competitions in between that. You know, when you when you like your Nations now. League, you, you, the, you, the European Championships internationally, the Champions League's the biggest club competition in the world, uh, men's and women's side, um, Europa League, the that that new council pop league they've got going. You know, the, the the what you call it, the uh, the one that Spurs are in that dodgy conference Europa League thing, whatever the hell it's called. Um, so you wait for make a massive amount of money. I think FIFA just trying to be greedy themselves and trying to claw some of that money back. And this is why you got Arsene Wenger coming out and saying, oh, it'd be good to have a World Cup every couple of fuck off and do one. I don't want a World Cup every two years. I want in club football rules, not international football. I don't I don't give a toss about England. I don't give a toss about who plays for them. I don't like cheering for rival players. Um yeah apparently this might be true, you know. This about FIFA lost the EA contract because of the they try and force the price upon EA uh, to use the FIFA name. So it could be this could be the last ever FIFA game to be to bear the name FIFA twenty two. Uh whether it's gonna be whether they come Come and do a deal like uh, to a, a sum that they both agree with. I don't know, but this could very well be the last game to be called FIFA, uh, and then that's going to stretch away back to ninety four, ninety five when the first one came out. So, so it's a long, long time. Uh, what's he on about age before we leave? Yeah, it's true. Connor will fill <laughs> you in that in. Andrew Wall. I don't know what he's on about there. Um, Great game is that, isn't it? No, just to add to that before we wrap it, I think the thing is, right, grow the club game first, grow the WSL, because at the minute we've had, like I said before, we have two games, we have two weeks off, we have three or four weeks of games, we have three weeks international break, we have games, and then we've got more, I'm sure there's another one in November, it's just ridiculous, so... Grow the game first at club level. Let's get that right. Let's not do any more extra breaks and let's not have a World Cup every two years. We can all agree on that. And you can wrap it now, Benny, before everybody... Yeah, absolutely. Before you yeah. offend anyone else or before everybody gets tired. Yeah, I don't care if I'm people. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll spit the truth <laughs> about the club game. To be fair, you wait for a fee for both banners each other. They're all about greed. They don't care about fans. They don't care about, you know what I mean? Apparently one, apparently one year you'll have a good World Cup and then the second one will be a shitter version of the, the first one. It's like, what the fucking hell's the point of that then? <laughs> Oh, I don't no, think I agree. It's bollocks, mate. You can tell it's a crazy yank that's come up with some sort of, you know, uh, sort of crazy idea like that. And as a finger, I expect better from you, sunshine. Anyway, um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> right, I'm, I'm, I'm right, it come to and it won't last half an hour. Uh, so I don't mean to. I apologise for anyone that I've, I've offended. Um, I, I love you all. Uh, Marty, you know I love you. It was great to have you on, a, on, on our Monday night show with Connor. Uh, we had really good before we before we leave. We had really good positive feedback on that. You know that show, Marty, you were brilliant. Even though me and Connor were struggling to get uh, questions in because you know we know what you like. You're very passionate the way you speak. Um, I, I I love you, Marty. You know we want you back on soon. I know John wants you back on soon as well on all some of his shows. So hopefully we'll see you back on the channel again at some point. Uh, thank you, John. Thank you for the great show. Thank you for everybody in the comments, and um, we shall see you next week.